think uh, now we will ask uh, Professor Salah Saliman, who is chairing, thank you, uh, who is chairing the, um, uh, the platform uh, for the African young students, as well as he's, he's an activist professor. Please, Professor Saliman. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, for the invitation and for uh, giving us the chance uh, to be uh, here uh, today. Uh, as a matter of fact, this morning I was uh, briefly introducing to the audience of this very important conference the program we have been uh, creating since 2011 in Alexandria, and now we have representative in almost every corner of our uh, continents, uh, made up with our graduates from this program. This program started, as I mentioned, in 2011. And uh, actually, the hope that we have, based on the fact that for a nation to develop and to stay strong, its natural resources must be wisely managed. On top of these resources, some come the people, and especially the young people of that nation or country or whatever. Empowering the youth and considering them as real partners is a must for real sustainable development. They are the fuel and the brains in the same time, and with wisdom, with them and by them, national, goals can be achieved. They are the power for change and development. Just give them a chance and they will surprise you. And here come our program. One, two, three. Alim. Right. This is the African League of Young Master, a program we created back in 2011, as I mentioned, and with hope and aims to open channels of communication between African students, bringing African students together for knowledge sharing and capacity building, to foster further cooperation, promoting knowledge and interest about health, environment, and sustainable action. We always use sustainable action instead of sustainable development. Strengthen the country, country, and multi-country relation and collaboration is one of our aim from this program. I'm going to take you in just a couple of minutes through some records of our past meeting during the last few years in Alexandria and in Cairo. And some of them are meeting over there in different African countries with Alim as well. So you can see them gathering everywhere, exchanging knowledge, ideas, building their own capacity, building their own knowledge and leadership capacity during the times. That's Cairo House of the Ministry of Environment where we meet every other Saturday, actually. <laughs> right, you saw one, two, three, right? Some other activities. It's only not only exchanging knowledge. This is one of the uh, workshop organized and led by Dr. Ismail Siragil Dean, I think two years ago. And this is the Alim graduation ceremonies of uh, 2020, or the, or the COVID batch, as most of them call it. This is the graduation ceremony in Alexandria in 2021. You can see the talent even of the Africans. Africa got talents, actually.
There are some other activities like workshop, visiting places, training in different areas. This is off-class activities, by the way. It's not included in the curricula of their graduation from the universities. It's an extra curricula. It's off-class activities, as I mean. This picture is from Maghrabi Farm, where they are trained during summer. Field trips to North Coast of the Nile Delta, where we are affected much. much. Some entertainment activities as well. And this from a visit to the wind farm in Zafarana. The following speakers are from the Africa we want. So I'm inviting the first group of my uh, young people to represent the climate change impact and challenges on North African countries. Please welcome them. Please be seated. If the rest, the rest of you, you can see it. You can see it. They will speak in Arabic. They, these uh, are the uh, group representing North African countries, Egypt, Morocco, and Libya, Algeria, and so on. That's great. Masail Khair, Barahab Likum Gamian, Anashru Ahmad, Mayarim, Mayarim, Yusuf, Wilina. احنا بنمثل جامعة اسكندرية وجايين نتكلم عن التغير المناخي في شمال أفريقيا. بداية كده مع زيادة الأنشطة الصناعية والبشرية واللي بدوره أدى لزيادة الكربون ديوكسيد في الجو وبالتالي الاحتباس الاحتباس الحراري أو الاحترار العالمي وأيضا اللي أدى لذوبان الجليد وارتفاع منسوب الأنهار وبالتالي بقى عندنا زيادة معدلات ظروف جوية عنيفة جدا زي الفيضانات والأعاصير وغيره. طيب كل ده ادى لمشكله التغير المناخي اللي احنا بنعاني منها دلوقتي او اللي العالم كله بيعاني منها يعني مثلا من 1800 السلايد معلش من 1850 وقت الثوره الصناعيه كانت انبعاثات ثاني اكسيد الكربون 183.5 مليون طن 183.5 مليون طن في حين ان احنا وصلنا دلوقتي لاكثر من 35 بليون طن يعني مليار الرقم تضاعف جدا طيب احنا فعلا كده بنواجه ازمه بيئيه طب خلينا نفوكس على نقطه مهمه جدا وهي اللي احنا بنتكلم فيها اكتر النهارده وهي الفرق الكبير ما بين في الانبعاثات دي ما بين الدول يعني هنلاقي مثلا نطاق او الحيز بتاع شمال افريقيا كله بينتج لوحده 500 مليون طن في السنه بحيث ان بحيث ان الولايات المتحده لوحدها بتنتج اكتر من 4.5 بليون طن بالمليار وده طبعا فارق كبير جدا ما بين خمس دول وما بين دوله واحده طيب لو جينا نقيس انتاج الفرد الواحد هنلاقي ان مثلا في الولايات المتحده هنلاقي في الولايات المتحدة هنلاقي انتاج الفرد بيعادل 33 مرة انتاج الفرد في دولة زي السودان مثلا وده فرق كبير جدا وده اللي عامل الفجوة كبيرة ما بيننا احنا كدول افريقيا وما بين دول العالم التانية طبعا ده كان ليه تأثيرات كبيرة على البيئة فتفضل يا نيم okay. Okay, as uh, pre mentioned in the previous table that shows the emission of carbon dioxide in North African countries uh, compared to China and United States um, were negligible, which proves that North Africa is not responsible for any natural hazards happening now. And although North Africa has contributed the least to climate change, it's suffering the most. So let's now start discussing the impact of climate change on the North African region. Let's start with the, one of the most significant impacts, sea level rise and flooding. Regarding flooding, many countries in North Africa um, have, have recently experienced floods. For example, Algeria, which was exposed in 2009, 2010, and 2019. 
Regarding sea level rise, one of the regions that is uh, vulnerable to sea level rise is Nile Delta. And according to 2018 study, over 280 square miles of Nile Delta could be inundated by 2050. And this will also lead to salt water intrusion, increased salination of aquifers, and this will affect agriculture as water quality uh, for irrigation will decrease, and we will lose a lot of urban lands. Beach erosion is also one of the consequences of sea level rise, um, affecting uh, coastal, mainly coastal uh, cities as Alexandria in Egypt and Hammamet city in Tunisia, affecting uh, tourism as Hammamet city is one of uh, tourist destinations. Secondly, increase in temperature and reduce in rainfalls. In the next few years, we will witness uh, biodiversity loss and migration of species to cooler climates and also degradation of soil quality and productivity and degrees in crops yield. And Libya uh, would be one of the countries that would, um, um, that would affect by uh, degrees in crops yield, as if the temperature increases to two degrees Celsius, it's estimated the crops yield is reduced by up to 30% by 2060. Moreover, increase in heat stress and sandstorms affecting human health as more diseases will be spreading uh, as respiratory illness, especially in children. Last but not least, increase in drought and degrees in winter affecting negatively winter uh, rain-fed agriculture and also uh, water conflict will arise um, um, as water, as it will be water scarcity result in uh, food insecurities. Uh, this uh, slide illustrates uh, the impact that we have been discussing. This uh, shows flood in Algeria in 2019, and this drought in the full region in Sudan, and this um, illustrates the predictions of uh, Nile Delta. This shows if the sea rise in 0.5 meter, and this shows if it rises in uh, one meter, and in this case, it would be essential to move about 7 million people from their homes. And it all depends on the pace of our uh, actions towards climate change. Thank you. وعشان نتجنب الكوارث المحتمله من تغير المناخ، كل دوله بتبذل اقصى جهدها انها تقلل من انبعاثاتها وتنمي مشاريعها المستدامه. زي مصر اللي من اهم مشاريعها بنبان وجبل الزيت اللي بي... ومشاريع تانية غيرها اللي بينتجوا لمصر 5970 ميجا واط من الطاقة النظيفة وبالتالي مصر بتقدر توفر 2298 طن من الكربون دايوكسيد وفي الجزائر مزارع الطاقة في الغراضية وأضرار اللي بينتجوا حوالي 34 ميجا واط وبالتالي بي... الجزائر بتقدر توفر 13 طن من انبعاثاتها والمغرب اللي بتبني واحد من أكبر مشاريع الطاقة في العالم اللي هو مشروع نور 1 وبتنفذ المرحلة الأولى منه بمقدار بانتاج 582 ميجا واط وده هيساعدها انها توفر 224 طن من انبعاثاتها. وليبيا عندها مشروع كفرة اللي بمجرد انتهائه هينتج 100 ميجا واط من الطاقه النظيفه وهيساعدها توفر 38 طن من انبعاثاتها. وتونس اللي قدرت تستبدل 8% من طاقتها بطاقه نظيفه ودوت ودوت كميه حوالي 224 200 حوالي 472 ميجا واط وده اللي قدر يوفر لها 181 و7 من عشرة طن من انبعاثاتها وهدفهم ان هم يزودوا النسبه دي ل 35% بحلول 2030 ودي بعض المشاريع في مصر في مصر زي بنبان وجبل الزيت ومشروع نور في المغرب ودي كانت بعض المشاريع اللي دول شمال افريقيا نفذتها عشان تقلل بيها من الاضرار الاضرار اللي وقع عليها من تغير المناخ Okay. Not only did the North African countries uh, focus their projects on mitigation projects, but they've also been working on some adaptation strategies to survive the impacts of climate change. Countries including uh, Egypt and Tunisia are now working with the UNDP, the United Nations Development Program, and the GCF, the Green Climate Fund, to secure the investment for coastal defense. Uh, Morocco, moreover, is uh, focusing its efforts on preserving uh, aquifers. 
uh, since groundwater represents more than 40% of the water used only in agriculture. Morocco has also recently signed the All Atlantic Ocean Research and Innovation Alliance Declaration, reiterating its commitment for a sustainable ocean and to ensure a healthy ocean for all communities. Moving on to the needs of the North African region, uh, coastal cities, including Alexandria in Egypt and uh, Casablanca, for example, and others are threatened to flood. So coastal defense would be an essential. Um, having desalination plants in every country would also be an essential to deal with extremely dry periods. Shifting and relying more on dry farmed crops, restoring nature to absorb more carbon, saving in water consumption, using public transportation rather than private cars, and increasing the environmental education and awareness among the public. Last but not least, even though climate change affects everyone, now is the last chance for the lead industrial countries to take the lead in restoring our planet. Industrialization might have economic benefits, but what is the cost? Thank you. Next, I'm calling the West African uh, delegation, please. Lina cannot two wheel us. Yours. Okay. The Honorable Protocols, Professor Salah, the entire women and gentlemen, good evening. I, Muhammad Sani Ibrahim, Faculty of Medicine, Alexandria University. I'm here to present climate change impact and challenges facing Western African region with my colleague. Ajak Aromayom. Ajak Aromayom representing West African uh, countries, challenges facing them. And I'm um, uh, in Faculty of Medicine, Alexander University. So I will try to introduce our colleague, our co-workers that help us to prepare this particular PowerPoint. Thank you. Next, this is the first slide about information. Latest carbon emission by West African countries compared with some other countries 2020. Just by assuming, complete West Africa, they are nearly to zero. Take less of China and United States. Nigeria is just emitting 125.46 million tons. 0.61 per capita tons, while China common can emit 10.67 billion tons, almost 99 times in general Africa, which is almost less than 3%. We see here uh, as well the Burkina Faso uh, emitting 3.97 uh, million tons, which uh, per capita is 1.9 which is real, <laughs> we could see that Burkina Faso is not even emitting even 1%, is less than 1% uh, compared to India and United States. And we see this, we from West Africa, we are not even contributing anything compared to, to uh, the United States and China and India, which are while the highest meters. We do also have uh, a graph that show the world in data and as well the highest emitter, which is China, with 10.67 billion tons, compared to Nigeria, which is the the highest emitter in West Africa with 125.47 million tons. 
if you compare there, it's just below zero. Because above is billions, and then below zero is millions. Thank you. So there's another illustration of another graph that shows our the world, China, United States, India, Nigeria, and Ghana, and Niger. By near looking, you can see China is high, Niger, Ghana, and Niger, they are low. In fact of climate change of this particular region, in Nigeria, this climate change will lead to drought, lack of food, and its availability. Well, in Ghana, people from Ghana will suffer a lot, most especially change in rainfall, weather conditions, sea level rises, salinity of coastal waters, and also in Senegal, it will cause problems, most especially as their social economic development because of the rise of in their temperatures, heavy rain, rise in sea levels, and so on. Cote d'Ivoire is exposed to climate change risks, hot average temperatures, far more inconsistent rainfall and rising temperatures. And this is expected to rise by 1.2 meters in the greater Basin and Basam and Abidjan areas. By 2050, his projection, been, uh, his temperature that 1.4 to 1.6 rise in temperature is expected in Burkina Faso. As a result, by 2025, Benin, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Mauritania, Nigeria, and Nigeria are all expected to experience water scarcity in some countries, mainly in tropical zones. Also, this is a particular image that I want to illustrate. This is just the study. This is a dot area in Ghana. Why this picture just the starting that flooding that occurred in Senegal? As a result, we could see that animals dying and uh, animals are sources of food and milk as well, meat and, and the rest of stuff. But you could see they're dying because they don't have water and they don't have food as well to eat. Uh, this is uh, in Mali, because it was taken there in Mali. Due to climate change, you see such animals dying. And we could also expect as well that before it was like this, but now you could see the drought just because uh, there's no water. We have been affected, but we are not even contributing anything uh, as a result. Also, the voluntary effort made by our governments to reduce the emission. They made two dams from different regions. There's Kainji Dam, which is located in Riba, Niger. That's able to produce 760 megawatt that will able to reduce the emission by 292.6 tons carbon emission. In Ghana, uh, they made also voluntary efforts in order to combat the, the challenges of climate change. And they built a dam called Akasombo Dam, which produces 1,020 megawatts. <laughs> and by this, it could reduce carbon emission by 392.7 tons of carbon. These countries are putting efforts, but they're not supposed to do this. These are some images of the dams. There's Kenji Dam that produces on, uh, 760 megawatt, and also there's Akosombo Dam, which is located in Ghana, that's able to produce 1,020 megawatt. As Nigeria also tried their best in order to combat uh, climate change. This is afforestation, planting more trees in order to reduce 
uh, carbon emission because we know that uh, trees they absorb carbon and so they try to, to plant trees in order to reduce the carbon emission in Nigeria. Adaptations, because these countries also, uh, uh, they try to uh, adapt to these climate challenges and the needs. Uh, and as a result, there are a number of adaptation priorities for agriculture, fisheries, and water, and health sectors in Western Africa. And these include building a capacity of non-governmental organizations, NGOs, association involved in climate change adaptation, increasing public environmental education awareness, like what we are doing now, just awareing ourselves to be able to do it. By this, the extreme events such as drought into adaptation plants. There is also a regenerative agriculture whereby lands are managed in a way that the soil absorbs and holds more carbon. We have just been talking about how we can uh, store carbon in uh, dry areas here yeah, uh, uh, recently. There is a restoration of coastal wetlands like mangroves is a natural climate solution and that restores carbon to be stored in uh, sediment and plant areas. So also, this is a cycle that Nigeria making national determination contribution target, the meaning of NDC. So changing private cars to bus or lorry, improving electricity, renewable energy, reforestation, and so on. Projection of climate change if action doesn't take it. Projection of climate change in Nigeria to reveal significant changes in both rainfall and temperature. Why? As the temperature increase from 1.5 to 5.5 degrees Celsius, that will occur. So also in Ghana, as it increased by that temperature 1.0 to 3.0 degrees Celsius, it will occur. In general, climate change from multiple codex experimental confirmation confirmed that temperature over West Africa will continue to rise by about 1.5 to 6.5 degrees Celsius. In conclusion, the world is facing a collective suicide over the climate crisis. Why? We are not doing anything, but we are doing suffering. So, that's, we have to construct a dialogue. There's a word always we are hearing about. There's net zero, 2025, net zero, 2050, blah, blah, blah. There's need for dialogue. There's this ad word that sound good, but lead to no action. We have to make a demand to these people that are emitting most because we are doing suffering by clothing, drug, poverty also, livestock are dying, so they should give us a new technology and they should pay back what they have caused before. Because there is no planet B at all. Thank you. Thank you. I just would like to remind you that they are undergraduates studying in different universities in this country. Egypt, from Cairo, Alexandria, Ain Shams, Al Azhar, and several other more. And I hope that you have noticed that all the presentation given or will be presented to you, all the slides are marked with the reference from where they get the information, the numbers, and they did the calculation, the analysis, the conversion from electricity produced and carbon dioxide produced by renewable energy and carbon dioxide prevented from emission. Now I'm calling on the group of East Africa. Thank you. Uh, 
dear professors, eminent speakers, doctors, and my colleague, good evening. Uh, in front of you, uh, postgraduate uh, students from Department of Dermatology and Andrology, Faculty of Medicine in Alexandria University, will present you to you the effects of climate change uh, in the countries of East Africa. Okay, uh, according to latest data from our, uh, from our world data record by 2020, uh, the annual carbon emission contribution by East African countries, it show for total East African countries is 51 millions of tons. Uh, in indiv by individual countries, the, max, the highest the most was contributed by Kenya, which show uh, 16.15 million of tons. Uh, this is a, for, uh, for annual contribution in, uh, in East African country, this is the highest most, while for the lowest uh, is from, from Djibouti, which was 0 0.35. Uh, when we compare with uh, some biggest emitters of carbon in the world, which was uh, US and China, uh, we show uh, for East African, we contribute in negligible amount of the carbon em emission. The same is also true for per capita emission. When we compare the annual emission uh, with the total population of East Africa, the same, we contribute a negligible amount compared to, to the rest, uh, to the biggest emitters of the carbon in the world as shown in the, clearly in the graph here, the China uh, and the US contributed to the most uh, of the emission and the negligible contribution uh, when we compare with other country from the East Africa. Okay, now the uh, come to the, for the impacts of uh, climate change uh, in East Africa. Uh, due to the impact of the uh, climate change, there are, uh, ex have, we have experienced the greater temperature exceeding in the global range. This has been recorded uh, maximum by Ethiopia, which was recorded 2.2 degrees Celsius higher than what have been recorded uh, in 1960. Also, uh, in the case of Mount Kilimanjaro uh, ice cap in Tanzania, there are successful uh, changes in the amount of the ice that also could, uh, that also has been resulted in uh, increasing in amount of floods in Tanzania. And also there is a cases of increasing in global warming and increase uh, global warming that increase. There is also issues of global warming cause the Indian Ocean surface temperature to rise by one uh, compared to rise by one as compared by what has been recorded in 1950. Also, there is an unpredict uh, unpredictable weather condition that uh, recorded the extremities between floods and, uh, and droughts. Also, in case of health impacts uh, in climate change, there is a recorded of increase uh, in waterborne diseases and uh, vector-borne disease due to the favorable uh, environment condition for those vectors. And also recorded an uh, incident of increasing uh, strong cyclone that favor the migration of uh, breeding locust that migrated from the desert to East African countries that also have uh, bring the major impact in crops production. Uh, these are photos of uh, Mount Kilimanjaro ice cap that show successful changes in ice, uh, in ice cap. 
Also, this is a recorded uh, floods, event of floods that happened at the Nile River in South Sudan. And also, this is a locust uh, records of a major locust epidemic. This locust was my, uh, due to migration from the desert from Middle East country to East Africa. This also due to the impact of climate change. Uh, if correct measure will not be taken, the following uh, projection and the severe and worse impact might face by the uh, by the uh, by 20, 20, 100 years ahead. Uh, like a prediction uh, of incre uh, increase in temperature range that might reach to more than four degrees Celsius by two hundred, also might be uh, recorded uh, on increased uh, weather unpredictability between the drought and the, and the floods. Also, there is uh, predicted, uh, there is predicted the rise in seawater level that might range to 0 0.7 to, more, to two, mil, two, two meter rise that it could be uh, replenished the smallest islands uh, in the Indian Ocean. Uh, I would like to welcome my colleague to continue the other part. Yes, yes, next. My name is Zainab Mkinde. I'm from Tanzania and I'll take you through the, uh, the mitigation and adaptation which are done in East Africa. As we have seen that these country, this countries contribute very little in carbon dioxide emission. But not only that, these countries are facing a lot of other challenges like education, poverty, food security, and health. But despite of all of this, uh, these countries have managed to do some efforts in reducing carbon emission. As we see here, uh, there is a construction of uh, hydroelectric power in Tanzania which is expected to produce 2,115 megawatt. This will save about 826 tons of carbon emission. Also in Kenya, uh, it has launched a climate change calculator with the aim of measuring the country's carbon footprint. This will enable to track the emission from the energy sector and formulate the reduction mechanism to fast track the country's transmission to zero emission. Also in Rwanda, uh, there is a climate action agenda 2030. This calls for 38% reduction of carbon emission by 2030. This project will require approximately USD 11 billion, uh, which is consisting of 5.7 billion for mitigation and $5.3 billion for adaptation. Uh, this is one of the project in Rwanda. It is called Romagana Gigawatt in Eastern Rwanda, which will produce 8.5 megawatt to the national grid. This project will prevent about 3.3 tons of carbon dioxide from emission. Not only that, uh, there are also some adaptation projects in these countries. Uh, like in 2014, Rwanda have used USD 84.3 million in project climate smart agriculture. This will support resilient agriculture crops that will be able to adapt with the effect of climate change. Also in Tanzania, uh, they have constructed about 1.5 resilient walls uh, around the water bodies in different coastal parts of Tanzania. This could serve more than 800,000 Tanzanians that could be impacted by the rising seawater levels. Uh, this is one of the uh, pictures showing the coastal protection project in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, the, resi the resilient wall. But also these countries need other uh, adaptation projects, including uh, introduction of drought resistant crops, adaption of the sustainable water resource management. Also they need reduction of water loss through water conserving technologies and sustainable consumption. They also need to promote use of the renewable energy for domestic uses. And instead of using uh, the current inefficient wood stoves, charcoal stove and efficient lightning. They also need to promote techniques for tackling emergency food shortage. They also need to have a 
comprehensive studies and control strategies, strategies on epidemic diseases that are associated from the climate changes. But as we all see here, these, uh, these projects are expensive. This uh, project need, uh, need fund, they need technology and expertise, which are not readily available in this country. So it's high time for the countries who are leading with the carbon dioxide emission to cut down their carbon dioxide emission as per agreement, and also help this country to build capacities, uh, to, to build capacities in adaptation projects. Thank you. seen they have uh, mentioned something about the uh, migrating species and for the last actually 12 years I've been giving a presentation about the invasive species as a pesticide chemist and pesticide man or whatever you can call it and I think we are facing these problems as well here in Egypt with tuta absoluta in tomato and several other species, invasive species, because of the change of climate change. Uh, may I uh, ask our uh, group from uh, Southern, Southern Africa, please? Cardino. Protocol observed. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are here uh, to give information uh, concerning the climate change impacts and challenges facing the Southern African uh, countries, more specifically on food productions in uh, the dry areas. Uh, my name is Almago Philip. Uh, I'm a student at Alexandria University pursuing a bachelor's degree in geology and geophysics. Uh, I will be a graduate this year. On behalf of Halim, me and my colleagues today will be representing the Southern African region. Uh, this table shows uh, the Southern African carbon emission in the year 2020. As we can see, South Africa emits 451.96 uh, 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 million tons of carbon, and compared to its population, it's 7.62 uh, emission per capita. And the lowest country here being Malawi, with 1.39, uh, compared to its population, is 0 0.07 emissions per capita. So if you can see the regional total of this Southern African region, we can see that the total region emits 509.62 uh, million tons of carbon, annually, and this was in the year 2020. Uh, compared to the population in the region, we can see the emission per capita is 2.82. Uh, the world in that year emitted 34.81 billion tons. USA, on the other hand, emitted 4.71 billion tons, and China emitted 10.67 billion tons. What does this mean? This clearly shows us that uh, the Southern African countries are uh, emitting or they contribute very, very less to the carbon emission, yet we are the ones that are actually being affected by the climate change impact. So we call upon all of you to check this information so that we can know what to do and what is right. The chart also shows uh, the Southern African region uh, compared to China and United States, as we can see, uh, the Southern African countries are emitting really very less compared to the giant developed economic countries. So some of the impacts that affect these Southern African countries, one includes uh, there has been cases of decline in agricultural and food production. This is mainly due to the drought and also epidemics uh, of water and vector-borne diseases has been cases in Namibia due to the extreme weathers. 
Also, there are cases in Zimbabwe of uh, veiled fires. And uh, for example, in 2021, a total of 408,000 hectares of land has been destroyed because of fire. And in 2020, a total of 220,000 uh, hectares of land has been burned down. This is all because of the climate change and uh, the rise in temperature causing bushes to dry up. Uh, one of also the causes is increase in temperature and uh, change rail food patterns, which has caused agriculture to decline. For example, in Botswana, uh, no longer experiences soft rains, but rather very heavy rains. And these rains cause damages and floods to the crops. We have also uh, experienced rising sea levels, which not only create stress uh, to the physical coastline, but also there's been cases of coastal ecosystem being destroyed and uh, destruction of ports. For example, uh, Port Elizabeth has been destroyed because of uh, the rising sea levels. Uh, there's been also cases of very and most extreme hot days and nights in Angola. This is all because of unpredicted and advanced weather patterns that is also experienced in Zimbabwe. Uh, the picture on the left side showing fire is in Zimbabwe, and uh, the picture on the right upper side uh, shows uh, drought in South Africa, and down picture shows uh, dry crops or crops drying up because of uh, the climate change in Namibia. So some of the voluntary efforts the countries of the southern region undertaking to reduce the carbon emission. One, there has been an integrated approach and best practices in management of waste with the view of reducing the greenhouse gas. And this is mainly observed or done by the Botswana government. Uh, also, in northern Namibia, uh, there's been a 10 hectare solar power which produces uh, 900 or 9,000 megawatts of energy per, per year. Uh, a Sumba Tati Solar project also in northeast of Botswana produces 100 uh, megawatts of uh, solar, and this will reduce 39 tons of carbon dioxide, or it will save 39 tons, uh, 39 tons of carbon dioxide. The South African's massive hydrogen valley project is also a step closer, and this project will actually uh, support in the, the reduction of emissions of carbon dioxide. A 200 megawatt uh, solar project is also expected to provide approximately 40% of the Tronex of African electricity needs, and uh, it will lower and it will save 77 tons of carbon dioxide per year. Also, installation of isolated mini grids of uh, solar panels could also reduce up to uh, 12,500 uh, tons of carbon dioxide equiv equivalent per year, and this is observed in Zambia. I believe that this is the right time to inform the public that the Southern African region contribute really very less, very less carbon dioxide, but then we are the most affected by the climate change impacts, and therefore we call upon the globe and everyone to put hands together so we can tackle and uh, support these countries. Thank you. Uh, good evening, my name is Carvino. Uh, I'm a student at Alexandria University, Faculty of Commerce. Uh, I could uh, take you through the effort and some of the projects that are adopted in these regions. That is South Africa. Uh, Zambia is tending to the nature to tackle the climate change that is eco-based adaptation process. And at the same time also South Africa is making some training to national park managers and other stakeholders on the climate risk information, decision analysis, a collaborative climate impact assessment tool for water resources. And uh, this is from the, the USAID capacity building and training on the climate science, vulnerability and adaptation assessment, the effective governance system for implementing the adaptation and data collection and analysis, and this is based in Angola. We also have the, developed the food forecasting early warning system, that is FFEW, to improve the resilience within the Limpopo River, this is in uh, South Africa, Basin, and its national member state, 
including South Africa. We also have the climate information training and analysis in Portuguese language, and this is in Angola. We have also some other needed uh, adaptation. We have adaptation of strategies that will enhance the application of water and nutrition and conservation technologies and to create an enabling environment for investment in the use of renewable energy for agricultural activities and others. Prioritize climate research and feasibility study on forest conservation, restoration of ecosystem and the use of modern technology for controlling wildfire. We also have promote the use of indigenous knowledge and traditional forest management practice that is contribute to the increased forest cover and land rehabilitation. And these are done locally with the local language to teach the local community on how to, to, to make good awareness on a climate change. Now with my colleague. My name is Rejoy Saduk. Uh, Alexandria University. Um, the projections in the year 2100, uh, locations around South Africa are uh, projected to experience sea level rise, and this rise is of about 0 0.5 meters above sea level, 0 0.5 meters. This increase is around 7 to 14, larger than the projections of the global uh, sea level. Then Cape Town area, is also expected to be completely flooded if temperatures increase by 30 degrees Celsius. Um, from the projections, we, from the slides, we can see the picture on the left is the Cape City. It is very normal. The, the, the sea level and the land are very differentiable. So on the right, you can see that as the temperatures keep increasing, the water keep extending on land. Then the picture below, we see that the water has come over to take over the whole city. So as the temperature keeps increasing, we shall see that the city will eventually flood. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm now I'm calling for Central Africa region. Ruaida Mohamed, I come with you in the Central African region. Despite the changes in the climate, the carbon dioxide was one of the most important factors in the world. And this table shows the overall impact of the year in the total Central African region, which is 51.78 million tons. مقارنة بالشينا واليونايتد ستيت فهو نسبة ضئيلة جدا لأنه بالبليون أما بالنسبة لناتج الانبعاث عن كل فرد فهو أربعة وخمسة وثمانين من مية مقارنة بالشينا فهو النص ومقارنة باليونايتد ستيت فهو تقريبا أقل من نص ده جراف بيوضح الزيادة في نسبة الانبعاث بتاع ثاني اكسيد الكربون من بعد سنة 1850 وده بسبب الثورة الصناعية بتساهم دول وسط افريقيا بكمية ضئيلة جدا من غازات الاحترار الا انها من اكتر الدول عرضة لاثار تغير المناخ دلوقتي هنوضح بعض التأثيرات على دول وسط افريقيا فكان عندنا في انجولا وجهة أسوأ حالة طوارئ في 38 سنة الماضية بسبب الجفاف اللي أثر على الإنتاج الزراعي وبالتالي بقى عندهم نقص في الغذاء وأطفال بتعاني من سوء التغذية زي ما حصل في تشاد وبقى عندهم انعدام أمن غذائي أما بالنسبة للكاميرون فكانت منطقة أقصى الشمال بتعاني في الزراعة بسبب هطول الأمطار وخصوبة التربة اللي أثر على إنتاج المحاصيل الزراعية وبالفعل قلت للنص ومن المتوقع إن هي هتقل بنسبة 90% بحلول عام 2100 وكانت من الدول اللي تأثرت في الصحة هي زامبيا 
وبسبب الفيضانات فاضطر عشرات الاف من المواطنين ان هم يهاجروا من مواطنهم زي ما حصل في منطقة وسط افريقيا وفي جمهورية الكونغو بسبب الفيضانات والجفاف مما وأثر عليهم في الطاقة والصحة وبالتالي بقى عندهم خلل في النظام البيئي وبالرغم من أن هي بتنتج نسبة ضئيلة جدا من انبعاثات ثاني أكسيد الكربون إلا أنها بتحاول جاهدة بمشاريع الطاقة المتجددة أنها تقلل من الانبعاثات دي صورة بتوضح تآكل التربة في جمهورية الكونغو والصورة الثانية بتوضح أثر الفيضان اللي حصل في زامبيا بسبب فيضان نهر روسيزي وكانت من المشاريع اللي بتعملها أنجلا فكانت بتنتج من السولار باور 16 و 3 من 10 جيجا وات ومن الويند باور 3 و 9 من 10 جيجا وات اللي بتوفر 7 و 7 من 10 طن من انبعاثات ثاني اكسيد الكربون اما تشاد فكانت بتنتج بتخطط لمشاريع طاقه متجدده اللي هتقلل نسبه الانبعاث 217 ونص طن اما بالنسبه لجمهوريه الكونغو فتركيب 113 لوح ضوئي للطاقة الشمسية وفر 13.9 من عشرة طن من انبعاثات ثاني أكسيد الكربون ومن الحاجات اللي كان اللي هيتم إطلاقها في بورندي الفوتو فولتيك أما بالنسبة لزامبيا فتركيب شبكات صغيرة هيوفر الانبعاث 23 طن وتركيب شبكات صغيرة معزولة هيوفر الانبعاث 12500 طن ودي صورة بتوضح المشروع بتاع تشاد اللي هو تحت التنفيذ وهكمل معاكم مقابل ما بذل من أجل التكيف مشروع التكيف القائم على النظام الإيكولوجي في أنغولا بيساعد على درء الخطر وعلى طبيعة على استعادة النظام البيئي الموائد بيوفر دفاعات طبيعية ضد الفيضانات والمناطق الشاسعة من الأراضي الرطبة بيستفيد منه 1800 شخص في مزارعهم المشروع ده بيقوم أيضا على إنشاء نظام إنذار مبكر للتنبؤ بالمناخ تدرك حكومة تشاد الحاجة وإلحاحية وأهمية المعالجة لقضايا التكيف وهي منخرطة في اتجاه أن تصبح ناشئة الاقتصاد المستدام من خلال الرؤية التشهادية 2030 في جمهورية إفريقيا الوسطى تعمل برامج التغذية المدرسية على تحسين تغذية الأطفال والالتحاق بالمدارس في المناطق التي تواجه انعدام الأمن الغذائي بسبب تغير المناخ رواندا تعمل على خفض الانبعاثات عبر القطاعات الرئيسية للاقتصاد طورت نظاما لمؤشرات تتبع التكيف في مجالات عديدة المياه والذراعة والأراضي والغابات توطين الإنسان وصحته بعد, تبد... بعد تدابير التكيف في زامبيا تشمل تعزيز الري وكفاءة استخدام موارد المياه وتعزيز نظم الإنذار المبكر واستخدامها نظم معلومات الجغرافية الاستشعار عن بعد في رسم خرائط المناطق المعرضة للجفاف والفيضانات ما هي احتياجات قطاع وسط أفريقيا؟ في تشاد ثمة حاجة إلى تكثيف الحفاظ على أصناف المحاصيل المقاومة للجفاف من خلال تبني الممارسات الزراعية الصونية للمياه وتعزيز نوع المحاصيل ترسيم خارطة دقيقة لمدى التعرض لانعدام الأمن الغذائي بسبب تغير المناخ واستكشاف السبل لتصعيد نطاق نشر آليات وتقنيات التصدي للمخاطر نحتاج لبذل الجهد لاستعادة المراعي المتدهورة وتطوير النظم الإيكولوجية في المناطق الساحلية المعرضة للخطر شكرا
Now I have uh, Charles, I believe, is coming. Who is Charles? Charles will uh, present an overview or some impacts on the African countries. Charles from Cairo. Hurry up. You can do this later. Good evening, everyone. My name is Charles, and uh, I'll be presenting today about the entire Africa we, compared to the rest of the world. I'm with my colleague here, Mebo Kabengele. So actually, I I'd like to thank uh, my fellow colleagues from uh, different parts of Africa who have presented from the South, uh, North, Central, the West, and the East. So actually, as I've said, I'm going to drill more on the entire Africa. I would like to say a few words before I actually went into the, the actual presentation, because actually climate change shouldn't actually be talked about like it's a mere issue, maybe like football. No matter what happens this season, next season is going to come anyway. So it's something that we really have to take seriously because it's really affecting our everyday lives. It's really affecting people. People are really struggling out there. So actually, when it, come, it comes to carbon dioxide, who, com who emits the most? Our continent Africa actually emit the least, as most of you have highlighted, that we are the people who are suffering the most, but we are actually the ones who commit the least with uh, continents like Asia, uh, the um, the USA, Europe, and the, the rest of the world. So actually, this is just, just uh, an overview of the emission of uh, carbon dioxide for the entire world compared to our continent, Africa. So right now, I'd like to talk more about the precautions of climate change on, in Africa. Actually, climate change has affected the economy of Africa. Africa, actually, most of the parts of Africa depend on rain fed agriculture. So if there's climate change, probably even the economy of the countries are actually affected, which leads to people living to in extreme poverty. When we come with pictures here showing you how people are living in different parts of Africa, it's not just a matter of showcasing how um, taking random pictures and making a presentation of, out of it. It's, this is the real life that is happening on the ground in the entire in the most parts of Africa. In 2015, actually seven out of 10 countries which are suffering from the consequences of Af uh, come from the African continent, which actually shows the numbers that really Africa has suffered from the consequences of climate change in the entire world. Countries like Malawi, Mozambique, there have been a lot of floods in Mozambique recently and in the, in the, in the northern part of Africa. It's all affecting uh, our continent, Africa. Also, climate change is very critical to our health. How? With, let's say, for instance, the floods in Mozambique, it will rid a breeding ground for mosquitoes. And one of the diseases which has been affecting Africa most is malaria. This will increase, I mean, the, a, lot, a, a lot more other diseases will actually increase because of the effects of climate change on Africa. And the last not, but not the least, migration. People are actually moving out of Africa. If you see on the major channels, um, on TV, people are dying, trying to flee to, to, for greener patches because they're running away from the consequences of, of climate change. So it's really, really, climate change has really affected our country so much that we really have to do something about it. It's really an opportunity that today we are standing to, in front of our professors and uh, most of you are actually uh, making, the, player, making the, the major roles in most of the leading uh, organizations and companies around Africa and around the world. Really, you really have to hear our voices as us, the youth of Africa, are speaking, as us, the, the youth of uh, Af This is just uh, some of the pictures which uh, represent the suffering which Africa is actually going through. 
you can see a lady who is trying to order your plant. Right, right there, you can see another lady who is trying to harvest. It means the, the I mean, the production wasn't that good that year. Right, and we can even see from from the other picture the the baby, which is carried by the, the lady. It gives actually a message out there. It's not just a mere picture. This is real life. This is what is happening on the ground. So right now I'm gonna invite my friend to actually co conclude the rest of the presentation. Good evening. My name is Mabel and I'm in the Faculty of Medicine. Um, as is already said that Africa being not being part of the major contributors to carbon emission, they've put in place some efforts which will help them meet climate change. For example, we have organizations like UNEP. They've worked with over seven countries into demonstrating how NDCs can be adapted and can unlock both climate benefits and socioeconomic uh, benefits simultaneously. And uh, there's also scientists who are prioritizing their research into generating new knowledge and finding optimal ways in which the land, even though affected, can be used into source of practical socioeconomic solutions. Apart from uh, big, on a, big on a organizations and uh, scientists, we also have the citizens who are also bringing forward uh, efforts to meet these climate changes. Like we have youth around Africa uh, being told to refocus their skills into finding out, into taking up actions that may help into finding impactful solutions against climate change. And there's also been encouragement of the citizens in around African countries into taking up participations in like uh, the Ghana Bamboo Initiative where they're working towards uh, finding sustainable production and consumptions. And also some students in St. Kizito High School in Uganda, they've been transforming bio waste into using it as fertilizer and recycling and plastics to be used in arts and crafts. The efforts may not be all that and used uh, into our daily lives, so there's also been adaptations in which they might be used for the people to have a better living standards or something like that. Um, for example, we have, like this, that's been talked about in most of the conference today, they've talked about the now data, how they're being affected by rising sea levels and salty waters. Therefore, this makes the water or in the land around the now data not very favorable for farming or for usage. So therefore, the, we have researchers and some other people who are looking for plant and fish species that may be used in such conditions. And also, uh, another example, we have Namibia, which is one of the most driest countries in the southern part of Africa. And despite being the driest country, it was also one of the first countries in Africa to have been uh, water recycled, to have water recycling plants whereby they reclaim sewage water through a 10 step process, is making it able to be drinkable and used in other daily chores or households. Thank you. Next. Uh, I think after you have uh, heard from our young people and the call that they been giving in a loud, sometimes voice, and the message that they want to deliver to the whole world that Africa is not responsible for what is going on with regard to the climate change and its impact 
on the whole world. We see, we see action uh, taken by many countries now. I think in Europe, they are taking it seriously after all of those incidents that they face during the last few months. The United States, the same. Unfortunately, we do not have the resources in these continents because our resources have been drained for long, very long. And we left up with almost about 1 billion, 1.3 billion people inhabiting this continent right at the moment. But by the year 2050, this number will be tripled or double and a half. And I think so. Uh, with the United Nations Conference on Sustainable Development Goals in mind, and with the passage of years, Africa continued to grow on from the problems facing its people and wish them to flee from it, to flee away. I don't think any human being can resist some, something like this, oh, I'm sorry. Like this and many, many, many other graphs and picture. With those goals settled by the United Nations in mind and with the passage of years, Africa continued to grow from the problems facing its people and pushing them again, I'm repeating, to flee away from Africa. What we are facing or what are these people here, the young people are facing from the act of others during the last 170 years. They are going to suffer much. And they are already suffering, of course. All the news, TVs, radios, newspapers show from time to time how our people in our continents are suffering. We can just put a small set or list of the challenges facing our young people in our continents. Negative impact of climate change, increased water scarcity, biodiversity loss, and ecosystem loss. Desertification, land degradation, reduced resilience to natural disasters. We cannot resist them. We are not, our infrastructure is not, or have not been constructed to resist those. Potential failure to achieve the Millennium Development Goals, energy crisis, food crisis, pandemic and health crisis, limited benefits gained from globalization. Everybody speak about the globalization during the last two or three decades. We've been promised that we are living in the one village. We are not. We cannot move even from the lines that figured out by the colonists in our continent. Every time I fly from Cairo, from Alexandria, to any country in Egypt, I look from my window in the airplane. And I couldn't see those lines separating Sudan from Egypt, or Sudan from South Sudan, or South Sudan from Kenya, or any other. Those lines were embedded in our brains and the brain of our rulers as well, unfortunately. Absence of disaster response mechanism, absence of anything actually, 
let us be frank. Despite the very low share in greenhouse gas, or gazat al-ihtirar al-alami, as I call it actually, emission of this GHG or whatever, the continent is hardest hit by the climate change due to its low adaptive capacity. Climate change is transforming Africa development trajectory. You can see here how much Africa is adding to the global emission. 1.33 billion ton out of those 35 billion tons emitted from others. And our young people actually explain this in details. I don't want to repeat what they have said, but these are some of the challenges I mentioned, and you can add more and more. To be successful in preventing the impact of climate change and get ready people in countries, poor countries like all the continents, all the 54 countries in our continent, both the GEF, the Global Environmental Facility, and the Global Green Fund projects will need to enhance adaptive capacity, improve decision-making, access to markets, policy, making our people have the access to other markets, policy mainstreaming, and evidence-based decision-making. This is what we need. We are not begging for support. We are asking for what we deserve. We need them, those people, those young people who are carrying guns, fighting each other. We are not making guns in, in Africa. Who is bringing those guns to us? Who? Instead of this, we need to build peace in the continent. This is just a map to show you the stolen African wealth. We need part of this to come back. Technology for free and other things. Water scarcity is facing food crisis. And you can you see it from the figure of the United Nations itself. Land degradation we spoke about, energy crisis, sea level rise. You can see here the delta of the Nile. You can see Alexandria in 2015 what happened. We've been using taxis hmm, as boats to move from a place to place. We have to invest in these people, the young people. Not to make Africa a dumping site for electronic waste, but bring those electronic equipment to Africa, to the young people of Africa to use. In God, we believe. In youth, we trust. Thank you. Let me uh, thank you, Professor Salah, and uh, full-hearted thanks to the young people of Africa. This is, was very nice presentation. We really thank you. Thank you all. The teamwork is showing up. You have done your effort to give us a very strong message. A message is well taken. Professor Salah tried to amplify the message, but it is already there. Thank you very much for being with us. I hope you will continue. We'll start tomorrow at nine o'clock. I hope all of you will attend, then we can continue uh, the meeting until the last day. This is resilience. I hope that you will be able to do this. For all our colleagues and the eminent scientists and scholars who are with us virtually, 
I would like to thank you all. Thank you for being with us until late, until now. And uh, we'll be looking forward to see you tomorrow, a program uh, which we have a very intensive program. Thank you very much, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.